Dr. Zakir Noik, who had interpreted the Quranic holy text and Hindu holy scripture on the question of the monotheistic standard, is strikingly quite similar. The debate on the rational basis to challenge the ancient holy text in relation to modern social development and today's demands is necessary. It is not possible for any society, in today's terms, to allow ancient text and outdated religious thought processes to violate basic human rights as it is happening in Afghanistan. ...is collected and given to us by Zakir Naik. What if the reference is coming from someone, the Muslim, they claim that he is a big shot? My voice is a little low. Um, I think this is from your side. From my side, the microphone here is high. <clears throat> so... You know, we mentioned before that uh, in the Hindus, they have a private part stone. The Muslim, they have a private part stone, the black stone. It's even in the shape of a vagina. But today, we are going to show you way more. Monotheism is a copy word by word from the Hindu scriptures. It's not me who is saying that, it is Zakir Naik, may Allah grant him a lot of versions in heaven. So this is your Zakir Naik. So Muslim, don't tell me you are lying, don't tell me, etc. This is Zakir Naik is going to tell you the concept of God in Islam. Look at the title, look at the, look at the, the concept of God in Islam. How Zakir Naik, he, present to us the concept of God in Islam. Listen carefully. Let's understand the concept of God in Islam. The best reply that any Muslim can give you regarding the concept of God in Islam is quote to you Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number one to four, which says, Qul Allahu ahad. Say, he is Allah one and only. Allah Hussamad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid, walam yulad. He begets not, nor is begotten. Walam There's nothing like him. This is a four-line definition of Almighty God given in the glorious Quran. Any person says so and so candidate is God. If that candidate fits in this four-line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. And this is exactly what is also mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. The same four points. The first. Listen carefully. This is exactly, Muslim, listen carefully. This is exactly, this is what? This is exactly, not similar, not close to be. This is exactly what is mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. Who is saying that? Zakir Naik. This is exactly. Listen. As God. And this is exactly what is also mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. The same four points. The first is, Qul Allah Ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Same as Chandogya Upanishad. Chapter number six, section number two, verse number one, which says, Ikkam Evidityam. God is only one without a second. The second point. Allah Hussamad. Allah the absolute eternal. Same thing which you mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Chapter number 10. Verse number three, that Almighty God is the supreme Lord of all the worlds. Point number three. Lam yalid, walam yulad. He begets not, nor is begotten. The same thing which is mentioned in Suhaitash Vatar Upanishad, chapter number six, verse number nine, that Almighty God has got no parents, he has got no master, he has got no mother, he has got no father. And the fourth is, walam yakul lahu kufwan ad. There's nothing like him. The same which is mentioned in Suhaitash Vatar Upanishad, Chapter number four, verse number 19, and Yajurved, chapter number 32, verse number three, which says, Natasipatima Asti. Of him, there is no likeness. There's nothing like him. So if any person says so and so candidate is God, if that candidate fits in this four-line definition, which is mentioned in the glorious Quran for a class, 
or the Hindu scriptures, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. <laughs> <laughs> so why you Muslim you say you have a God you, you, you know the funny about this is that the Hindus are pagan they say to you that the Hindus they are not going to go to hell then we find that the Muslims they stole from the Hindu scriptures exactly the same verses and they put them in a book which is came thousand of years after if we go and search what how old is the hindu scriptures is like the one he was reading for us from you will see it goes between 1200 bce and 200 bce so who stole from who who is the one who stole the god concept the one who wrote the book thousands of years before Muhammad or the one who came thousands of years after the Hindus and as long Zakir Naik said the word exactly the same and we agree with it they kiss the stones you kiss the stones they go to a temple believe it's holy you believe in a temple which is holy the center of holiness in the world Everything in your religion <clears throat> is nothing but a story from somebody else. The difference between Islam and Hinduism, Muhammad, he was living between some Jews, some Christians, some, uh, uh, you know, Arab have many gods, Sabians, so he took from everybody little. But it's clear now, and it's not me who's saying that, it's it was like that it says exactly exactly what this is exactly what you can find in the hindu scriptures and even he consider in different video he speak about muhammad mentioned in the hindu scriptures so how muhammad is abrahamic and he, he doesn't know who gabriel is right because he didn't come from an abrahamic faith the people of mecca were pagan Quran has mentioned this. the people of mecca they were pagan he is not from the abrahamic faith he did not know who is gabriel religion we find that they have nothing to do with Abraham and actually if we go in the Quran you know one of the lies the Muslim they say to us that the one who raised the Kaaba was Abraham <clears throat> but according to Muslims the one who built the Kaaba it was the angels <laughs> in chapter 2 verse 127 it says the one who raised the, <clears throat> the foundation of the Kaaba, which means the Kaaba was destroyed. He raised the foundation. He did not make foundation. The foundation was there. He raised the foundation. It was Abraham and Ishmael. Okay, what happened to Abraham? Why he left? Same time, if we check the Quran, we will find a different verse, a totally clear contradiction. No one ever came to that town before Muhammad. <clears throat> Nobody ever came before Muhammad to that town. Let us see the verse. Huh? Uh, So we can laugh. Uh, this website. The chapter 34, verse number 44. Do you see it says, Nor sent to them before you? Before you. But before Muhammad, no one came to this land. And the Quran confirmed before you. So the Muslim, they can say, because, you know, the Muslim, they will say, uh, they are talking about that time, that time when Muhammad came, he is the first one who came to Mecca because there's no, you know, in his generation, it says before you. Min qablika. We never send before you, Muhammad. We never even send them scriptures. 
if Abraham was there, well, according to Islam, Allah, he gave Abraham scriptures. And the Quran called it Suhuf Ibrahim. Where we can find that those scriptures? This is a chapter 87, verse number 19. Do you see it? Do you see it? So, Abraham, he received the scriptures. Abraham, he went to the Kaaba. According to Muslims, Abraham, he built the Kaaba. Abraham, according to Muslims, uh, his son Ishmael, he did marry from the Arab, according to them. So how did people receive the scriptures? Is it the Muslim they believe that even Ishmael is a messenger of God? Are you following with me? This God, who cannot maintain his language, and he could contradict in himself. And look at the Abdul. Stupidity is amazing, sons of Muta. Why you have a you have some girls for me, for rent, to do Muta as the Prophet he allow? I'm not interested. Why you want to see my face? Because they can ref cannot refute what we are showing you. They love to change the topic in the speed of light. This is what the Abdul did: potatoes, potato, potato, potatoes, and here we fry them. I want a smart Muslim, if he is ever exist, to tell us how Abraham received the scriptures, how Abraham is the one who built the Kaaba, how Abraham is the father of Ishmael, how Muhammad is the son, the, the grandson, son, 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 son of Ishmael, as you claim. And then the Quran says that nobody came before Muhammad to the Kaaba, to Mecca. Your God, Aka Muhammad, he asked the Jews and he was reading from the same exact book. And then he said to the Jews, bring me the Torah. And the Torah brought to him, and they read for him from the Torah. And supposedly one of the Jews, he put his hand there over us, a verse. And then Muhammad, he grabbed the Torah and he says, he put it in the top of the cushion, and he said, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. According to Islam, a female monkey, she committed adultery. Not muta, because muta is not adultery in Islam. You see, if the other monkey, he pay her, that will be muta, she will be fine. But what happened, this monkey, she did not do muta. So what she did was not halal. During the pre-Islamic period, and this one of the Sahaba saying that, of ignorance, I saw the she monkey surrounded by a number of monkeys. They were all stoning it. Look, stoning to death is exist for monkeys too. Can you believe it? Abdul, he saw a monkey is throwing rocks at a monkey. That means they are stoning this monkey because she committed adultery. They were stoning it because it had committed illegal sexual intercourse. And you are worried about that the, the, the Old Testament, Abdul? <laughs> illegal sexual intercourse? Are you sure it was illegal? I mean, are you sure? But what, what if she was engaged? Come on, like, come on. But if you read the story, by the way, if you have my book, Sex and Allah, you will laugh. You will see that this monkey, she is married. Yes, brother, she is married. Chapanzi, she have a red ass. She was married, and her husband was sleeping over her arm. And then... She saw another young monkey. You know, like, like he start blinking and making noise, sexy noise, like you. And he sing for her, like, I'm sexy, and you know it. The female monkey. This is a Muslim monkey. What a shame! What a shame for a Muslim monkey to do that. She would draw her arm from under the head of the husband slowly. Look how filthy. And then she went behind the tree. And they did boom boom. And she put her arm under the head of her husband. 
Amen. Oh man. Aman Rabbi Aman. You cannot trust female in this zaman. She put her hand under the head of the husband and she acted as she did nothing. But Allah is all merciful, brother. The male monkey, he smells sperm. <laughs> he starts sniffing, you know where? You know where? Not her mouth, hello. And then he starts screaming, ha, 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 ha. and all the monkeys, Muslim monkeys, Mujahideen, Taliban, they came from everywhere. And they make a court judgment and they decide to stone this female monkey who committed illegal sexual intercourse. And you are worried about the Old Testament, Abdul. And you are worried about the Spanish, Abdul. We have exactly the same concept. And what makes it more unique, that even the video of Zachary Naik, the title of it, listen carefully, the title of it is the concept of God in Islam. And how Zachary Naik explained the concept of God in Islam? He says it is exactly the same as the concept of God in Hinduism. Regarding the concept of God in Islam, it's quote to you Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4. And then he continue, and he say the following, how beautiful. Accepting that candidate as God, and this is exactly what is also mentioned in the Hindu scriptures, the same four points. Exactly the same four points, and even he quote for us the verses. So why you keep lying? You know, here, you know, what is unique about this God? If the Hindu have the same God thousands of years before Muhammad. Right? Your neighbor is watching the video. But uh, as you see, I'm so happy that Zakir Naik, he come to us with amazing study proving to us that the concept of God in Hinduism and Islam is the same. And imagine, this video is made by Zakir Naik. You see, you see this picture? This is not made by Christian Prince Photoshop. This is not made by Christian Prince Photoshop. This is the channel of Zakir Naik. Look with me. 2.9 million subscribers. This is a video done, published, spoken by Zakir Naik. The concept of God and Hinduism, of Hinduism and Islam is the same. This is the truth. And this is exactly what is also mentioned in the Hindu scriptures, the same four points. The first is, Kul Allah Ahad. Say He is Allah one and only. Same as Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number six, section number two, verse number one, which says, Ikkam Evidityam, God is only one without a second. The second point, Allah Samad, Allah the absolute and eternal. Same thing which you mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 10, verse number three, that Almighty God is the Supreme Lord of all the worlds. Point number three. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is begotten. The same thing which is mentioned in Swetash Vatar Upanishad, chapter number six, verse number nine, that Almighty God has got no parents, he has got no master, he has got no mother, he has got no father. And the fourth is, walam yakul lahu kufwan ad. There's nothing like him. The same which is mentioned in Swetash Vatar Upanishad, Chapter number four, verse number nineteen, and Yajurved, chapter number thirty-two, verse number three, which says, "Natasya patima asti." Of him, there is no likeness. There is nothing like him. So it's exactly the same. Now ask yourself, which book is copying from which book? The one who came thousand of years before Islam, or the one who came thousand of years after Hinduism? And if you say how the Hindus came, 
the Arab always they use it to do trade with India. Everybody do trade with India, not only the Arab. But the Arab, they are so close to India. If you go and see the map, let me show you. You will see that the distance between in the sea, between India and the Arabian Peninsula is just a few hours in the ship. Few hours in the ship. Zoom out. Do you see how we're close? The other side of the of the sea is 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 Pakistan today, but this is also always part of India. Do you see how close it is? Few miles only. This is why. When people they say the Arab, the Arab are not really Arab as an ethnic. Most of those who call the, they call them Arab in the Arabian Peninsula, they are Indian. And we do not need to prove it really so hard. It's so easy. If you look at the people of Emirat, the people of Qatar, the people of Saudi Arabia, and you look how they look like, you will see nothing but a Pakistani person. Isn't it this guy from Pakistan? Be honest. Look. This is the Prince of Qatar. How the Arab look different from people of Pakistan? If we can call the Arab as an ethnic. Their clothing, their customs, everything. You see this this new the, the 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 Arabian they call it Arabian today. This is something new. But always they used to wear. If you go and see how people of Bahrain, people of Qatar, people of Emirat, people of Oman, how they used to dress, they dress exactly like the Indian in the old days. And then they start mixing with other cultures and learn how to dress differently. If you go and see even how people of Yemen they are dressing. Red head shake. Listen carefully what he will say. Ah. So the Meccan pagans and those who worship idols, they believed that there is God, but they cannot communicate with him directly. They cannot communicate with him directly. Muslims. Was Muhammad able to communicate with his God directly? <laughs> you see, they are giving a definition of the pagans. The pagans, they believe in God, but they cannot communicate with him directly. Did Muhammad ever communicate with his God directly? So what Jibreel is about? Did Muhammad ever heard the voice of Allah, the fart of Allah? No. Even the Muslim agree that there is a, a person, his name is Jibreel. So what directly mean? So by the definition of Islam, the one who cannot communicate directly with God is a pagan. It's not me who said that. Listen carefully. I'm not the one saying that. This is your sheikh. The pagan, they cannot communicate directly. Cannot communicate with him directly. So that's why they have taken those idols as intermediaries. See? So the Muslim cannot communicate with Allah directly. What they do? They take the black stone. This is why the Hadith says, the Prophet says that the black stone is the right hand of Allah. This is why Muhammad, he says, whoever touched the black stone in the Yemeni corner, it erased his sin. So, pagans are people who cannot communicate with God directly. They take a middle person, and the Quran is full of a place speaking about Muhammad being the middle person. And the Hadith clearly saying that Muhammad is the one who will intercede even for Muslims, because Muslims cannot communicate with Allah directly. And Muhammad cannot communicate with Allah directly too. 
Muhammad, he communicate with the angel. The angel communicate with Allah. Muhammad kissed the black stone. They say because it's holy. We ask them why it's holy. They say because the Prophet kissed it. This is how confused they are. Because nobody can explain it. And then a smart Muslim, he must say to you, okay, when you kiss your wife, does that mean you, she is, you know, my wife is a wife. I'm going to have a baby from her. <laughs> I kiss her because she is a female too. You are kissing the black stone for what reason? She's a female? She want to have a baby for you? The truth, yes. According to the Islamic tafsir, and we show the reference many times, that Arab women, they used to go around the Kaaba placing their hand in their vagina when they have their period. And then they place their hand inside the black stone, praying to the black stone to make them have a baby soon. And they used to go around the Kaaba totally naked. And not to forget to mention, if you look how Muslims they wear the clothes of Hajj, and you look how the how the Buddhas and the Hindus they dress, especially those who they are priests, you will see, or those who do visiting temples, you will see they are wearing the same clothes. They uncover one shoulder. They cover one shoulder, they wear no underwear, and they wear a sandal. And as you see, the Arab used to go totally naked around the Kaaba. Now remember, the pagan, the Arab, they worship the same God of Muhammad, Allah. So how they are pagan worship the same God? He said, because we cannot, they cannot communicate with Allah directly. But can Muslim answer why they are going around the Kaaba naked? What is exactly the religion is a practice there? What is the requirement in this religion to make people go around the Kaaba totally naked? Right? Uh, Harun, you are late. You know, you know, Harun, you are like a you are like a guy. Uh, his wife, she have a, she have ten kids. When he was away for seven years, and when he came, he said, "How we can have ten ten kids?" And I was away for seven years. She said to him, "I was having twins." <laughs> uh, and that refuted him. Refuted him, but he did not ask himself how she get pregnant. <laughs> you are late, Harun, Mister Cat. This is your name, Harun. The Bible does not follow Ishmael life. He went to the Kaaba with Abraham. Okay, can you tell us about Ishmael life in the Quran? Can you tell us even what Ishmael mean? Can you even tell us what Abraham mean? <laughs> Secondly, Abdul, if your Quran saying that there is no warner came to the Kaaba before Muhammad, so how you lie and you say that Ishmael was there and Abraham was there. Be careful. The Quran confirmed there was no messengers came to the land of Arabia ever. And even for Mecca. And no scriptures ever came. Abraham came without scriptures. He left it home. Uh, he put it maybe in Amazon. Chapter 34, verse number 44. And we had not given them scriptures which they could study, nor sent to them before you. You might say, oh, this is before. It says before you. Nobody ever before Muhammad came to this land from the God of Islam, Allah. <laughs> 